a little milk peddler from the stories of the pilgrims. A little milk peddler. In a cottage near the pilgrims lived Mevro Van Zant and her three children. Carl was 12 years old and did not like being called a child. Had he not been his mother's right-hand man all these long weeks while his father was away on the fishing boat? And did he not peddle milk every day to earn money for the family? Carl had two trusty dogs, and every morning he harnessed them to a little cart. Into the cart, he put three shining kettles filled with milk and a long-handled dipper to measure it. Sometimes there were round yellow cheeses or golden balls of butter to put into the cart, for people were always glad to buy Mevro's butter and cheese. The little pilgrim boys liked to go with Carl when he peddled the milk. They liked to help him harness the dogs, and when the cart was ready, away they would go all over the rough stone street. It was hard to tell which made the most noise, Carl's wooden shoes, the heavy wheels of the cart, or the clanging of the milk kettles as they bumped together. The dogs knew where to take the milk almost as well as Carl did. They stood very still while he went to the door. Often as Carl raised his hand to wrap, the door opened, for the good housewife had seen him in her looking glass. Many of the Dutch women had two looking glasses just outside their window. In them they could see far up and down the street without leaving their chairs. There was at least one pair of wooden shoes on nearly every doorstep, for the children of Holland were taught to take off their shoes before they went into the house. One morning, there was a pretty blue pincushion on the door of a house where Carl and Jonathan Brewster left milk. It was made of silk and trimmed with ribbon and lace. What a strange place for a pincushion, exclaimed Jonathan. Don't you know what that means? The storks have brought a baby girl to this house, answered Carl. The storks, exclaimed Jonathan in surprise. The storks, of course, answered Carl. If you are, a, are kind to the storks and never hurt them or say bad things about them, they will bring you all sorts of enjoyment. Perhaps they will like you well enough to build a nest on your chimney. If you nail a cartwheel across the largest chimney, it will make a better place for a nest. There goes the stork now with a frog in its mouth. As he flies, he looks like a great goose except for those long legs stretched out behind him, said Jonathan. Oh, he is much larger than a goose, and his bill is three times as long. Are storks as good to eat as geese, said Jonathan? To eat? To eat a, a stork, said Carl in horror. We would not kill a stork for anything. Did I not tell you that storks bring us enjoyment? It would be enjoyable to get a big bird if it tasted as good as a Christmas goose, replied Jonathan. Greedy! It would be the last good luck you would ever have, answered the little Hollander. Pooh, said Jonathan. My father says there is no such thing as luck, for it is God who controls all the events in life. Just let me tell you what happened to Jacob Pelton, said Carl. For two hours he had sat on the dike with his rod and line and had caught only three little fishes, so Jacob was very upset. Just as he came up to his house with his blanket on his arm, down flew one of the storks which lived on his chimney. I suppose the stork had not had good luck with his fishing either, and his babies and their mother were hungry. When the stork saw Jacob's basket of fish, he put on his long bill and helped himself to the largest, put in his lar long bill and helped himself to the largest one there. Oh, how angry Jacob was! Before the stork had time to spread his wings, Jacob struck him with his staff. I am sure he did not mean to kill the bird, but there he lay dead. And now listen, said Carl in a low voice. That very week the cows got in and ate up all of his garden. Then little Peter fell off the dark dike and broke his arm. Not long after that, Jacob lost his job in the mill. He has had bad luck ever since he killed that stork. I do not believe the storks had a thing to do with it, said Jonathan, when the story had ended. You just ask anybody in Amsterdam whether storks bring luck, answered Carl. You have a nest of storks in your chimney. What good luck did they ever bring you, asked Jonathan. 
Oh, we were always lucky, answered Carl. Every season, Father catches a great boatload of fish. We can always sell our milk and vegetables, butter and cheese. We are always well, and at all last year, I stood at the head of my class in school. Yes, the storks have brought us much good luck. I do not believe in storks anyway, insisted the little Christian English boy. Hush, whispered Carl. You had better not let the storks hear you say that. So here is the picture of the little boy peddling his milk, hooking up his dogs in his little wooden shoes. And here's some questions. What pulled Carl's milk cart? Why were there wooden shoes by the doorsteps? What did some of the Dutch people think about the storks that Jonathan knew was not true? There's a picture of the cart and the dog and them walking around selling milk as peddlers. This is Grandma Carla and I love you.